Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan Trader and Technical Analyst with the Chart Guys. We're going to look in on the markets and see where we stand after today. We're going to talk about not fighting trends. We're going to talk about the big dump in the cannabis sector and where we stand in the broader market as we head into the FOMC tomorrow. So I'm becoming a bit of a broken record at this point, but the bulls have absolute complete control and we know not to be fighting trends because the bulls have uptrends on every single time frame and we're testing all time highs. And we know that we will believe the market when it is telling us what it is doing and not look to try and nail tops and nail reversals before there is any sign of a reversal taking place. So we have SPY right now adjusted for the dividend, all time highs, 467.13. We're about 0.75% away from that happening. We've got a daily stair step pattern with a higher low every day, close near the high three days in a row. And we know that when we do pull back next, even if it's a bearish reaction to FOMC tomorrow at 2 p.m., we're going to look for a daily higher low because the bulls have given themselves a decent amount of space to work with. So right now, the only hope for the bears to fail all-time highs would be a big bear reaction to the FOMC tomorrow. We got through the CPI numbers. We got through the 30-year bond auction. So that's all we're looking at as far as major potential movers in the short term. But Again, I'm not anticipating a huge move off of the FOMC tomorrow. Hourly uptrend is our guide. And it's just keeping full control. QQQ, same deal. Higher low every single day. The way that the weekly bull flag confirmed on QQQ, look at the SPY weekly chart. So it was just bear control and then v shape stair step move to confirm the monthly bull flag and qqq just did that on the daily if you zoomed into the hourly chart the hourly would look like the weekly on spy and then just v-shaped stair step to confirm that bull flag and again you know where where's the move where's the momentum going to come from to keep this move going well you have a bunch of the magnificent seven who have not confirmed higher highs yet so you look at amazon's daily chart well that's a weekly bull flag that is yet to confirm and you look at Meta, Meta daily uptrend just confirmed today. The weekly higher low is set, still riding that swing position and just walking my stop up. So my stop was under 313 risk free because I sold partial. Now my stop's going to be under 320 and just going to keep walking it up as long as the daily uptrend remains intact. But Meta is a potential weekly bull flag. Google is a tightening weekly range or daily range, whatever you want to look at. It's going to break this tightening range probably sometime before the end of the year. I'd say probably next week. We'll see. Other than that, we got Microsoft still sideways. Again, weekly bull flag on the table. So all these major names have not confirmed weekly bull flags yet. And if they do, that means the NASDAQ's at all-time highs. QQQ has a little bit further to go. And also make note that the futures charts are a little bit different. The cash levels are a little bit different, but... The ETFs adjusted for the dividends, we need about 1.7% on, maybe 1.5% on QQQ. And again, just hourly uptrend. We got space for the hourly higher low. We got a daily stair step. We can pull back 3% and form a daily higher low. Something drastic has to shift. We will see it happen as it happens. If not, we follow the monthly, weekly, daily uptrends in the market. Monthly, weekly, daily, hourly uptrends. Tesla, tightening daily range, broke bear today. And there was a decent amount of follow through on the bear break of 236.97. But the base here, look at all these touches, 231 to 232. That's the most important level. And bulls are trying to hold it. Still tightening sideways. Can definitely break either way here. But Tesla relative weakness does still remain a thing. And that's been a, a thing for a while, Tesla divided by QQQ shows us that, you know, we've been weaker. And right now, today, Tesla hit the weakest it's been compared to the NASDAQ in weeks. So that has been a pretty consistent theme, but we know bears on a name like Tesla aren't going to get any kind of significant follow through if the broader market just keeps heading higher. Semiconductors, new all-time highs as well. Daily stair step, doing the same thing as the NASDAQ. Hourly higher low set, 166.68. Again, just head into every day. Mark your hourly level. Remind yourself bulls have complete control of this hourly level as support. And then take it from there. AMD continues to lead the way. Monster breakout. 
trying to make its way back towards all-time highs. Still a long ways away, but a very big two-week move. NVDA, daily higher low is set. If we break 477.41, the daily uptrend confirms and the weekly higher low is set. So the sell-off in the Magnificent 7 yesterday resulting in daily higher lows for continuation in the broader market. ARM trying for the daily higher low. Inside bar, bear break. Decent bounce, but we need that hourly uptrend. So tomorrow's going to be a pretty important day. We've got to hold the low, confirm the hourly uptrend to shape up the daily higher low to try and keep EMA 12 and the uptrend strong. Healthcare, new highs. Just a note, I'm going to stream tomorrow morning. Lori's a bit under the weather, so I'm going to do a pregame long-term patterns check-in stream, which we've done a couple times over the year. Most of those patterns have broken bullish, but we'll check in on them just the same. So XLV, daily uptrends are guide. We've been in a daily uptrend for weeks, and we're just looking up now at some resistance in the 135s and 136s, and that 136.29 level is a very important long-term resistance. Again, you go to the three-month chart, and it's just sideways for years, and this is building pressure, and if we break bullish here, we can definitely see a decent amount of follow-through. Again, we don't generally trade sideways for this long. I'd say back in 2015 to 2016 is your best example of something similar. Financial sector following through with the daily bull flag. Today, we broke the second level of the monthly equilibrium, which we'll talk about tomorrow in the stream. We were watching this pattern for a long time, many months. It broke bull with the first level. Now we've broken bull the second level. We've hit the highest price in 20 months in the financial sector. I'm assuming KRE has confirmed the monthly uptrend by some pennies. And so now the next level is just the all-time highs. Still a ways away. Well, not really, 1%. Really? No, 10%. 10%. Daily uptrend remain, remains our guide. Absolutely nothing changes if we're in a daily uptrend. Again, I know it's an unusual move. It's what we've been saying for a month plus. It's an unusual move. The bulls have full control. And don't fight this momentum because it's unusual. IWM, sideways, tightening up. Bulls need a break of 187.92 for continuation. Simple statement, if 183.39 is support, the bulls have complete control. Tan the solar sector still, I mean, there are, there are weak names out there, weak sectors, not many. Tan is one of them. Tan just hit the lowest level in weeks today. The energy sector is the other. Bear flag confirmed to fresh lows. Weekly and daily downtrend. So there are some weak sectors. I was watching XLU for a potential daily rising wedge. That's still in play. Let's see how that breaks. But again, for the most part, it's bulls. ARKK, nice and tight sideways. Bulls need to maintain 47.50 to keep their full control. Airliners were a laggard sector. Daily bull flag confirmed for continuation. Biotech sector, daily high or low trying to shape up. It is set held that low. And that was one of the, the play for the morning was playing off of the low of yesterday on many names. The biotech sector just barely held that low. NVDA just barely held the low. We opened right above the low of yesterday into the hourly uptrend confirming. Cannabis sold off hard. This is a massive uh, high volume dump. It's some of the most aggressive selling that I've seen on MSOS. Uh, what's the reason? losing hope for anything to happen before the end of the year. But this is the technical most likely scenario. We knew to be watching for the two week lower high. I had a target of 740. We got even higher than that. And that was just the 50% retracement mark. But now we're going to look for a higher low compared to 492 and a continued tightening range. You could use the weekly as well. But again, just your standard equilibrium. After we saw a big enough bounce, we knew the equilibrium was most likely. And we're watching for that to tighten up into next year. Crypto stocks hanging on. Coin is the lead bull. Holding the daily uptrend. Just sideways the last two days. A break is coming tomorrow. 
MARA and Riot, inside bar for MARA, inside bar for Riot. So trying to recover, expecting volatility to pick up in those names tomorrow. The dollar. So this is key. Look at the 12 hour here. We double topped at the high of the bounce. And we must break, if the bears are going to take over, we must break 103.27. FOMC is key tomorrow because that's going to shape whether this is a weekly bear flag or not. The metals are still really struggling. Gold, four hour, just not able to do anything. We had a morning bull move on the CPI numbers. We rejected from four hour EMA 12 and headed back to the lows. Silver did the same thing. Miners gave it all back. Tried to bounce yesterday. Opened right at the high of yesterday, bearish engulfing candle. So metals and the miners still really struggling. Uh, they need a spark from the FOMC reaction. Oil daily bear flag confirmed. New resistance level is 71.96. Bears remain in full control of oil with a daily and weekly downtrend. And natural gas, if you ask me what's the percent chance that yesterday was marking a temporary bottom, I would have said 80% chance. One of the reasons I don't trade natural gas, but extremely impressive bear control and closing down at the lows, squandering that bounce attempt from yesterday. So again, I know, I mean, the people that are having the hardest time right now are people that are focused on the fundamentals, but just stick with the trends. And again, SPY is going to top out, and then it's going to form a weekly higher low, very likely. So just keep all that in mind. Where do I think we're going from here? All-time highs, but after that, how long can the bulls keep control? I have no idea. And the beauty of technical analysis and my style of trading is I'm not, I don't need to predict that. I just, every single day, are bulls still in control? Yep. Are we holding this level for the trend? Yep. Okay. Don't need to do anything. Don't need to shift. Stay long, leaning. I made one attempt to short today just because I'm only long and I don't love that heading into fundamental events, but tried for a 15 minute lower high here, looking for a 15 minute equilibrium on the CPI reaction. It was wrong. Tiny little loss stop out. So it's a cup and handle on the monthly time frame. Who would have thought? Do good things. Appreciate the sauna tips. Definitely got a bunch of messages about saunas as I continue to weigh some decisions. Not doing much filming outside because it's cold. But I hope you're great.